going on fam welcome back to the chad townsend to chad townsend show sorry and i've got another teammate on today and it is the second episode this off season gives me great pleasure please make him welcome ronaldo mulatalo what it do what it do i feel like i'm about to rap <laughs> before we just press record we're sitting here and and it's it's quite often you walk past the the locker room and, and some of the boys are sitting in the corner and they're rapping. I know Britain Nicole, all the boys, but we should get them on. Yeah, maybe I know, a we rap. should start a rap. A little competition on here with the podcast. <laughs> Mate, what's been happening outside the bubble now? We've probably finished off maybe three weeks ago, but what have you been up to? I've um, just been chilling out, uh, trying to catch up with all my mates around here. Um, had a couple of beers with the boys and stuff like that, just yep. to wind yep. down a little bit after what's been a stressful year, obviously. Yep. Um, but other than that, Ah, uh, sleeping in, bruh. <laughs> sleeping in, obviously, <laughs> our morning starts and everything. And um, That's actually a question I want to talk to you about later on, more in detail. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, nah, I've just been sleeping around, uh, mucking around with the boys, um, and yeah, just eating out everywhere as much as I can, so... yeah. That's trying, been, trying to put on that weight. Trying to put on that weight. <laughs> <laughs> Hurts. Um, it's obviously a good thing to have. All the boys always give it to me. But yeah, trying to put some weight on. It's been the hardest thing actually yeah. for, for these last couple of weeks. But um, the beers aren't helping. So, I mean, what's the latest at the moment? Like in terms because you're obviously from Brisbane. Are yep. you able to go back up there? You got plans to get back up there? Well, that's the hard thing was because we obviously we finished early October and they kind of said they're going to open the borders around uh, November, the beginning. And so um, I'm just waiting till November. Hopefully that you know, that all goes well. And um, by then I can kind of sneak back home and see mum and, and yep. the fam. Yeah, which will be good, especially after, yeah. you know, probably haven't seen him for a yeah, while. Yeah, I haven't seen him since May, or probably earlier, Yeah, I think, before all of it started. So, um, but yeah, mum's FaceTime in there starting to yeah, get kind yeah. of boring, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> she clued up on FaceTime, she, she knows yeah, how to use it. She, she knows <laughs> how to use it, so it's been pretty good. Um, She's been FaceTiming and stuff like that. It's more so my brothers, like, just seeing them out every yeah. weekend and... Um, I miss that. I miss I miss giving my brothers in that stick about everything else. So yeah, yeah. I can't I can't wait for that. Get back home. Yeah, beautiful. Well, uh, I guess my next question was a little bit about like your hobbies, which you just sort of touched yep. on. But um, and then you, and then you mentioned like sleeping in. And <laughs> before I get yeah. into this, <laughs> like I talk to the boys, you know, after we have a day off at of training, I'm like, oh, what'd you do yesterday? And you know, quite often the younger boys, oh, slept in. Like, what time did yeah. you wake up? Oh, any time from like 10.30. Like, I've asked Tricky before, what time did <laughs> you wake up? Bro, I woke up at 12 yesterday. <laughs> Bro, be asked Tricky. Like, I, th- I thought I was bad. And then um, sometimes I give Tricky a buzz at like 11 o'clock thinking like, um, oh, yeah, like, surely yeah. or something started. Like, at least brush your teeth. And he's just waking up. You can hear him yawning or anything. He's like, oh, I'm just getting up. Oh, like, man. what the hell's going on? Because I, I find it so funny now because now obviously I'm a little bit older than you. I've got kids, yeah, I've got yeah. family, and I'm up quite early. But then, uh, you know, I can't sleep in probably past 7.30. If I try yeah. to sleep in, 7.30 is the latest, latest I'd ever wake up. But, you know, I, I'm always up now, like before 7, 6, yeah. six o'clock, 6.30, I'm up. and But then I look to myself and I'm like, when I was your age, when I was 20, when I was 21, and... And like I, I didn't have like I wasn't in I was single I was still living at yeah. home I um you know had no responsibilities pretty much except for myself and I would do the same <laughs> thing man you stay up late you're you know watching TV or you're playing video games or whatever yeah. you're talking to the boys um and then I'd sleep in you know I'd do the same thing ten thirty eleven right. like like bro, so honestly, what time do you go to bed bro, so, like I remember when I first came into grade um I had the worst habits like I probably yeah. like look back at it and just go wow I can't believe I was doing that um yeah. if I had probably the worst memory I like I went to sleep late I was on the game with the boys back home and yep. I just got carried away and before I knew it was like two o'clock and it was, this was a con day so we had like a con day the next day and we all know what con day is like you know what I mean like and I was just like so I woke up and I was rattled as, and I was just like, man, like, you know, I wish I could sleep in, blah, blah, blah. So I went down to the servo 
You grab the whole mother, <laughs> like a big 600 mil mother, <laughs> go to back. This is before Connie, <laughs> bro, and I'm running, spewing up. Oh, jeez. Good old Andrew Gray back then is just yep. giving it to me, telling me to keep running, and I'm doing this outback spewing all over myself. Like, well, oh, I don't, don't worry. If we all go through it. And <laughs> as you get older, as you as things start to change in your life, like, you know, you you go to bed earlier, you get up earlier. It's yeah. just, I think it's just a part well, of life. Like. Can't wait for that. Bit, cause I'm like, bro, I'm just, <laughs> but don't worry, it's normal because I used to do it too. <laughs> I wake up and I just miss everything. I'm like, oh, I hate this, like... This sucks, but I'd rather <laughs> sleep in and, you know, get a bit of rest and stay up late. All right. Well, um, talk to me a bit about your heritage. I know, you yep. know, obviously Samoan heritage, um, born in Australia. New Zealand. Born in New Zealand, but also, you know, got some American yeah. Samoan as well. Yep. Like, talk to me a bit about that. So, mum's family is a dominant. It's funny because all the boys pay me out about this. They're like, oh, you got every national. <laughs> like, kind of, that was like Ricky to tell you a few years ago. He's born in born in Australia, but had a, a New Zealand passport. Passport, yeah. yeah. So, like, mum's American Samoan, dad's just normal. Yep. Our boys in Samoan. And then I was born in Auckland, New Zealand, uh, Middlemore Hospital, as, as well as everyone else. Yep. Um, but yeah, like, and then moved over to Oz. So, um, I've been there since I was, I think I was 14. Yep. I moved there. But, um, yeah, so that's to answer everyone's questions about yeah. what is he like. Everyone's always asking, <laughs> yeah. "What are you like? Are you American or are you Samoan? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Are you Kiwi or you Australian?" I'm like, oh, "I'm a bit of everything. Got yeah. love for everyone yeah. at the moment." So, yeah. but yeah, still trying to kind of figure out where I want to place myself in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. love it. Awesome. All right, let's get into some footy chat. 2020, which was a season mm. we've probably never seen before. And probably something we won't ever see ever again. Yep. Um, but talk to me a bit about the bubble, you know, the COVID challenges this year, how you found it, you know, things like the temperature testing, the constant daily reporting, uh, the app, no crowds. Like it was it was different, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Like um, obviously I only played eight games last year. So like obviously I didn't know what, what it was like before that, but I know I had a little bit of a taste. Um, and then this year hit kind of was was all over the joint. Yep. Um, I think I got a bit worried there. I was like, oh, you know, it was probably a good thing I saved a bit of money, especially during that break. Um, you know, I think there was fears of us not getting paid mm. and you know, all the other little things in that. But in terms of footy wise, it was it was different because you know sometimes we're running out into a crowd and there's no one there. Like it's hard to get G'd up for that. You know yep. what I mean? Like it's hard yes. to get up for um, when there's a no there's no crowd cheering you on and um, just the temperature checking every morning. Like it wasn't really. A big hassle like it was just rock up show your ear wash your shoes blah 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 and um i think the hardest thing was that like the fact that we couldn't go out as teammates and yeah you know do the little things that we take for granted i think take, yeah exactly take for granted and um that that's what hurt the most and not seeing my family because mum and that always come uh, throughout the year yep. kind of visit us and um always check up on me and everything you know that was probably the hardest thing for me it was immensely i didn't have my brothers my my kind of support system around me, and it was just kind of my mates, and um, we didn't get to see them all the time. So, but even like you know when we played up in Brisbane, and I wasn't playing, I was injured this game, yeah. but it was probably one of our best wins of the mm. season. And I know that you had a, like a really big, yeah. like thirty tickets, thirty yeah, family yeah. members rock up because that's obviously you know where your family's based. And you know, for everyone out there who might not know, yes, yeah. you're actually not allowed to go and give your mama a cuddle, but she's standing right there and yeah. stands. Like, talk to me about how hard that would have been. Well, that was. That was real hard because I felt like that game was my kind of redemption game for what happened in my debut, and I was disappointed about that. Um, but and I, I felt like my mum kind of knew what was at stake for me and how much I really wanted that game. Yep. Um, and my family, I'd, exactly, I had about 40 tickets or something. <laughs> like, it was crazy. And, like, Paul Noakes, he's looking at me like, I'm already under the pump. Like, <laughs> and here you are just putting more pressure on me. So I'm like, sorry, I hate to do it, but I need 40 tickets. So... Like, I ended up paying for most of them. Um, and I just told my family, don't worry about it. It's once in a you know a year where you get to do it. Yep. But it was hard. Like, I saw my mom, my baby sister, um, after the game. And my mum was Terry. Uh, the old boy was Terry. And the whole family just drunk as, just, like, just crying, cheering. just yeah, cheering. Yeah. And it was just a surreal moment for everyone there yep. um, kind of thing. And it was good to see everyone there just tearing. Uh, Terry and... Um, I think just happy, you know yep. what I mean, to yep. kind of see the product that they produced. Um, yep. All my older brothers, my cousins, my um, aunties and uncles there, and you know that they were just awesome. So 
know what I'm saying? I have them there and you know, it was hard to not just reach over the barrier. Yeah. Like, they're literally like right there and I was like, I can't give you a hug. Because the COVID cop standing yeah, the COVID, is away, just so eyes this, on. This big dude's just like looking at me. I'm like, oh, like, should, I just, should I just do it? Like a little fist bump or something? Yeah, I couldn't even do that. And Because if, if you did, like if you go and if you shake hands or you give him a cuddle like straight oh. away, boom, got to go get a COVID test, could be you know, wiped out for two weeks. Mad like dramas. Like, yeah, it's full saying, on, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was yeah. full on. So like, I was just like, oh, I don't, like you, you end up hurting your own teammates at the end of the day. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I was like, you know, my family understood it was my job. Yeah. Um, and that's what pays me, and that's what you know keeps my dream living like live. And yep, yep, yep. So yeah, I had to. That was the hardest thing. My little sister was trying to reach out, and my family trying to like tell her, "Oh, you can't." Yeah. You know, it's part of what's going on at the moment. So would you say that Brisbane game was your favorite game of the year, or would you? Is it another one that comes to mind? No, nah, I, I would hundred percent say that uh, Brisbane game was yep. my favorite. Game of the year. Um, you obviously know what happened on the debut. It wasn't the prettiest. And like I said, I felt like I had to redeem myself. Yeah. In Brizzy. Yep. You know, my home. Um, and and I, I know what I know what you're saying in that sense because, you know, I've gone through throughout my career where you've played a game, potentially like a, a, a bad game, a yep. poor game where you feel like you didn't, you know, play your best. And yeah. then, you know, the following year, it's like, well, we're going back to play that same team at the same stadium. Yep. And those like sort of those emotions or those, you know, uh, events, events are in the back yeah. of your mind and you're like, I need to make amends, like I need to play well here. And you, not only you play yeah. well, but the whole, whole team, team like played excellent that night. Like I think what made it even more special was that like all my mates that I kind of came through, SG Ball, um, under 20s and then Cup, yep. like all my mates that kind of played those games, we ended up playing that game as well. So yeah. it was like Braden Trindle, Jackson Ferris, um, you know, Sifa Talakai, Toby Rudolph, all those boys, Tiggy boy. Um, and I think when, when I kind of ran out, um, I spoke to the boys before it actually, and I said like, you know, this is what we dreamed of. Like, yeah. And I remember looking at them when we ran out, and the, everything's going off, and the, the chair, like the crowd's cheering. I said, it's on, boys. It's on. Like, you know, I just looked at it, I was like, we on, baby. <laughs> like, let's go get it. And then, obviously, our family there as well, and... I remember me and a few acts as well, we always mock each other about Anthony Milford, like at training. So when we do our kick practice, we're like, Anthony Milford's kicking it to you. <laughs> and we all like start like getting more jittery about it. And it's funny as, yeah, so I remember we worked so hard on the Anthony Milford kick. Yep. And that's yep. what we keep on the back of our heads is the Anthony Milford, like Anthony Milford kick, blah, blah, blah. Yep. And um, I think we prepared ourselves so much. Mm. Like if you ask DJ and all the coaching staff that, did our kicking practice, we tapped into that so much yep, as Anthony definitely. Milford's kick. And I think when it mattered, like, in that back end of the game, I think us back back three came up with some big plays to, to help us out. But 100%. Yeah, that was love, definitely the game. I love that. Well, I guess, you know, you're still quite young. You're 20, 21? Yeah, turn 21 next month. So there you go. So you're for still that. 20 years old. Yeah, yeah. Mate, and um, just finished your, your, your second year of first grade. But are there any you know, plays within our squad who come to mind that have really helped you, I guess, over your first two years with sort yep. of um, potentially, you know, try maybe even mentor or give you a yeah. piece of advice that you've really taken on board and have helped you so far. I always tell the story about you. And um, that time I was just like, my ass is out the back. And I remember uh, it was my first kind of preseason. I just rocked up and I just remember I didn't get back. You know, as a 19, 20 year old, you don't think a winger should do much. Yep. I was like, no, nah, I don't need to do much. And I just remember, like, here, my ass is out the back, I'm running back, and you're already waiting for me, and you're just screaming at me, what? Like, what a beep, 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 are you not back? You better get it. I remember you come up to me after, and you're like, oh, like, that's just, like, what comes with it, you know what I mean? And yep, yep. I remember you just giving me the little mental. Even when I have a bad game, mm. a poor game, you're always coming up, bro, oh, brush it, like, yep. this and this. You've been massive for me. You really know. I always let you know. Um, even... I, the guys like uh, J-Moz was massive for me when I first came in. Yep. Um, he just kind of taught me what it was like to just like, be all about the business, be present, blah, yep. blah, blah. And, yep. Um, I always give credit to J-Moz. And he was my center as well. And I think heaps of the senior boys, I think, is like one of the best things I, th mm. I came into. Like, you know what I mean? I came into an awesome leadership crew where – like, it's not that awkward barrier. Like, yep. I feel like I can ask a question yeah. anywhere. I feel like I can... And everyone's always giving me lessons. Braden's, like, he's into his, what, fifth year, fourth year or something, and yep. he gives it to me, and he tells yeah. me, this is why I give it to you. Yep. I don't hate you, I love you, but this is why. Yep. If we want to get better as a squad, this is it. And I remember this one saying Doogie said, 
we stuffed up a play at training and I was like, oh, who cares? Like it's, you know what I mean? We do 10 of these, mm. 20 of these. Yep. We stuffed up one. He said, well, I remember he just came in. He's like, that one there that we stuffed up could be the one you try in the game. And I think now I understand the importance of it. Um, not fully, but, you know, I'm starting to get that feel for, you know, if you drop a ball in the start of a game, if you drop a ball in an important point of the game or whatever it is, mm. If you don't execute a try as a winger, like it, you know what I mean? It's a ripple effect of what it can do to our team. And um, it's that's the matter of winning a game and losing a game. So I think, the, yeah, the older boys have been massive for me coming through as well. So I, that's I awesome. It. It's awesome to hear. What is Ronaldo Mulatalo's <laughs> biggest improvement next year? What's, what's one thing that you think or you've identified this year and you're like, that's something I want to get better at next year. I want to get, you know, better moving forward in my career. Mm. Um, my involvement and my defence, um, I felt like I slipped off massively um, after the injury and stuff. And I'm not going to give, my, I'm not one to give myself an excuse. Um, and I just need to be better. I was disappointed with the way I defended this year and let our team teammates down in that sense of it. Um, and my involvement, um, I can't wait for next year. Um, I think, you know, obviously we don't, we're not ones to, we don't play the game for the people that talk that don't know what's going on. Yep. But yep. Um, no, you'll be lying to say that it wasn't at the back of your mind, and it's motivation. It's motivation, exactly. It is. And you don't listen to external noise, but yeah, you, it, you know, sometimes you hear it, and it's just like, if anything, as an athlete, it's like a big. Well, hey, I got this in the back of my mind. I don't worry. I'm more. I'm motivated as it is. Yeah. But f you. Yeah, I'll prove you wrong. Well, that's what I say. I, like in the back of my mind, I speak to my mom all the time. She's my best mate. And yep. I said. Mm, back's against the wall my, my back's been against yeah. the wall my whole life people yeah. have doubted me my whole life um, I'm not the biggest bloke I'm not the <laughs> fastest bloke I'm not you know what I mean but there's but one look thing you're where you've come from and where yeah, you're at today like exactly. that's the back's against the wall yeah. story and I just you know, what I say is like um, my back's against the wall it's who shows up yep. Yep. Um, yep. who's yep. got your biggest heart and you know what I mean I'm, I'm always in, like a dog when yeah. I come to things I yep, love to yep, yep. that dog mentality you know what I mean fight for every bone you I get I love that and, um, and that's how I, I've always lived um, from mm. the day I came in as a junior and um, next year I think I lost a bit of it this year um, but you know what I mean next year's a, a year definitely where I'll come to get my bones and scrap for everything I have so I love that because that, that that is always my piece of advice especially to our younger players who might have a, a poor game or a bad game and we all go through it yeah. whether you're young old the best player in the world the worst player in the world like you're going to have a bad game it's just yeah. guaranteed but one thing i always say is that you know it's bad games and adversity is a part of professional yeah. sport it's not <laughs> it it's is. not a freaking it's not all it's rosy. Not that, yeah, that's what it's, it's a roller coaster it's an up and down mm -hmm. roller coaster mm -hmm. and the thing i always say and i hear it a lot in american sports as well and we speak about it so often in our training and, and it's to focus on next job next job yeah you know what i mean you make a mistake boom i can't just be like oh i made a mistake or oh, i oh, I'll play the safe option or I'll do, you know, I'll go into yeah. my shell. It's like, no, next job, keep the same mentality. Just back yourself. But I think that's something that really helps us as, yeah. as athletes. Would you agree? Yeah, 100%. Like like I said, that's where your guys' experience comes. We didn't like reading, like us younger boys, like younger boys don't read books. Like, you know what I mean? We don't read yep. the books, read the podcast and listen to all that. And that's our senior boys taking those extra steps as leaders yep. and then bringing it back to our team. And um, I think there's one good saying where you say like your best game and your worst game, you got to close that gap. You yep, know what I mean? Yep. And that's the that's, that's the that's the good sign of a good quality yeah. NRL player. Yeah, and yep. that's where I need to focus on tapping in. Is I'm having a game really up here, and yep. I'm having a game like and yep. the gap between those two. Like you've always said to our whole team, is it's too far for my liking, and it's it's not that NRL standard kind yep. of thing. And you know, you look at the likes of Josh Adokar, mm. and Malu, all those top wingers, Brett Morris, and that. Their bad games are right next to their good games. Yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. And that's 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 the seriously the key. Like I said, yeah. the, the difference between a good or a, a bad in our real play is th that exactly. it's yeah. the, it's the game and it's the consistency. And then it's also like. Like I said before, everyone makes mistakes, yeah. but good quality NRL players they don't make the same mistakes same mistake, twice. Yeah. Like I might make a mistake 
during a game, I, I might kick the ball out in the full, for example. Yeah. But next week, I guarantee you, I won't kick the ball out in the full. And, and what would I be doing all week at training? Yeah, kicking those I'd balls, be kicking it. Sure, like, if you've if you've yeah. if they've put up a bomb and you've dropped a bomb or yeah. two bombs during the week, what are you doing all I'm week? Just catching the ball. And then what are you making sure that you don't do the week after in the yeah, game? Dropping that same. You're dropping ball. that. You're not dropping that ball yeah. again. And that's what good quality NRL players do, mate. Consistent, yeah. consistently. Yeah. But I guess. Yeah, rep level, because mm-hmm. that's something I wanted to speak about with you, because, you know, no doubt, like, I see you playing rep football one day, but who for? Yeah. I don't know. What What are you thinking at the moment? Obviously, qualify for yeah. here, there, and everywhere. Like, I've, like, it's, I've spoken to Wade, and, uh, like, I've always wanted to do the haka for Kiwis, you know what I mean? Like, when I was younger, the Kiwis used to see them, and I used to fry watching it, loved it. But the thing is, I never got picked in anything in New Zealand. You mean like, yeah. I, was, I was always the too small bloke or brushed across. And then I came to Australia and it was just like, they just gave me everything. You know what I mean? Like just threw everything at me and gave me the, the life that I couldn't even imagine for. And yep. I'm a real guy of, I feel like I owe them something. Um, I feel like I owe Australia something. I feel like I owe yeah. Queensland the state something. Um, yeah. And I feel like I owe Cronulla Sharks something. And that's how I've always been as... Um, if I if you give me something, all I needed was an opportunity. Yep. And that's how I feel, and I feel like every one of those people have given me that chance to do it. So um, I've definitely wanted to stay with Queensland, Queensland, and um, represent them. Um, I think I'll just stick with that. Either that, or I'll go back to Samoa and yep. represent uh, my family's heritage as well. So it's one or the other. Um, but yeah, that's where I stand. I've, I'm, I feel like I've been a real proud Queenslander. That's because mum, mum's being real proud as well, and yep. um, that's mum. One of mum's dreams is to have one of her kids running around in a maroon jersey. So uh, to do that for mum, you've, you've, you've already yeah. played. You've already played twenties, haven't you? 20s, yeah, I played eighteens and twenties, yep. um, yep. which has been awesome. And just getting that little taste for it, yeah. um, and having like hot like um, Hodges and that come in, and every time they talk about it, they get full Terry and everything. And I was just like, holy, like this is a different world. And yep. to go up into camp as well with the the boys last year um, was even better just to t- top it off and get that little feeling for what what could come. Um, but yeah, um, hopefully one day I get to take that goal and um, that would definitely make mum a bit teary. So I would love to see that one day, hopefully. Man, that's awesome. Awesome. All right, something a little bit lighter now. Obviously, you know, we spend quite a lot of time together yeah. uh, as teammates and yeah. um, all of us, you know, we're in this all in the same locker room. It's pretty much like being at school in the, in the classroom, to be honest. There's a lot yeah. of class clowns going around. Yeah. But, um, you know, who, let everyone know who you sit next to in the locker room and who is probably one of the biggest pests in our locker room. Who's always up to something in so, from your yeah. point of view? So I've got the, like, Million dollar crew got Shawnee next to me. <laughs> million dollar row. Um, yeah, million dollar row. <laughs> All the guys Millionaires row, in, sorry. I'm just sitting there with my like solid, you know what I mean? My little contract just going punch So you got SJ on one SJ, side. And, and then Shaw, oh, I got SJ, um, Doogie. So we've got our little row, 24 of us. SJ, Doogie, and um, Ramey next to me. Yeah. So All the big bucks. Millionaires row. All the millionaires row. I was just looking around like, there's a lot of money on this section. <laughs> I'm not contributing anything, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm contributing the bottom lower half. Um, but the biggest, the biggest pest, bro. Like no one sees this, but Matthew Moylan. Yes, he, I see it. He does my head, and like all the boys know, he's a pest. Like in the lockers, but like everyone out there probably wouldn't see it coming. Yeah. Um, uh, Maddie Moylan, if you're watching this, oh, oh, some like some days, like I just feel like just clotheslining him in the locker, and, like, and he just sits there and laughs, like, and he always just gets under my skin, calls me like a um, he calls me like the little side poles at yeah, out of training, and he's always got something to say, like, yeah, yeah, doesn't matter where I am, he just knows where I am, and yeah, him and Royce Hunt, yeah, I was gonna, that's who I was going to mention to you. I'm like, I've seen Ronnie and Royce go oh. at it a lot this year, and I've seen like Royce. Throw Ronnie's bag in the ice bath. Ice like. bath, yeah, and because um, like you two have so had a, a, a running all year, haven't you? Little boy, well, ones and two. Yeah, me and them always have it. But the biggest one we had, right? I came out and my whole I opened up my locker and all this water just came out. This was just recently, like before we got knocked out. And I was just, I was offered like it was all on my clothes and everything, and I was just like, I turned around and asked Moisa, Moisa, who was it? And he goes, it was Royce. So I chucked all of Royce's stuff in the ice bath. Yeah, come back and he. He chucked all my stuff in the ice bath, but all my boots and everything. And so I asked him, did you 
throw, I only started this because you threw my stuff in the, yeah. um, or you watered my locker and he goes, that wasn't me. I'll go back. And Moisa goes, nah, that was me. I'm sorry. Bro. Oh, <laughs> oh, I mean? So Moisa told me a white lie. And that's why I got Roycey. And then Roycey got me back. And Moisa's just sitting there pretty. And I'm like, you. <laughs> one nil me. Moisa. One nil Moisa. And he's just sitting there like, you dumb, you dumb asses. I was just like, I hate you. See th- see what I mean? Like, that just makes you hate him even more. Like, oh, yeah. you bloody pest. Oh, Love him though. He's a good bloke. It's but Some of the best things about yeah. playing footy is that sort of stuff. <laughs> um. All right, what's what's the best thing from your point of view about being a professional rugby league player? Um, for me, it's the fact that I get to give back to my my mum, give her the life that she never had, and yep. set my family up. We always talk about money and stuff like that, Chatty, and yep. how we can put our money into better things and better places. And I feel like I've taken a big step into doing that. Also, I feel like the impact you can have on people's lives um, and what you can do for people in, in the sense of like we're in a great sense of power. Um, and I'm not here to blow all the NRL boys' heads up, but yep. you know, we're in a, like a real great place to help people out. And I think um, I've always said to myself, when I get that platform, if I ever did, um, I'm going to make sure um, I wasn't just known as a footy player kind of thing. And yeah, I love that. Um, I think I want to be bigger than just the rugby, yep. the guy that just went out every weekend and yep. more than an, more and than an athlete. Like yeah, exactly. I just want to be more than an athlete and uh, play my part in the community and yep. just for the world. Like, why not put a smile on someone's face and yep. just yep. kind of? And that's why I love doing this job is that now that I got a bit of power to do it, I yep. can push it even further and it just goes on and on. You know what I mean? And that's what I love about it. Yeah, and that was, I guess, the next thing I wanted to talk about, which was your community work, which you've yep. done, mate, and absolutely, for a young man, 20-year-old, the amount of work that you've yep. done, I've seen it, man. It's incredible. It's changing mm. changing lives. Um, but Ronaldo won our uh, community award this year at our presentation and also nominated for the Ken Stevens yeah. Medal Award, which is every uh, one player from every team gets nominated for their work in the community and then um, the NRL awards this player. But talk to me a bit about your community stuff. Why, you know, what what, what brought that on and, you know, what are some of the stuff you've done this year? I think because the things I've seen as a kind of young bloke, like it's just like, it's not at the ki- it's not at the fault of other people and, you know, all the, sometimes it's just your situation and I feel like if I can play that part, that I, I mean, be that little 1% of that, you know what I mean? Yep. These are... I've always wanted someone to help me out when I was younger. The person never came. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I want to make sure that I want to be that person that came for someone else yep. kind of thing. And um, I, I don't feel like – I'm a real big believer. I had a tough conversation with mum that I don't feel you should be rewarded for helping other people. Yep. Um, I feel like it's just one of those things you do out of your heart. You love people. And I think we have a, a great chance to, to help everyone out kind of thing and – um, I think we want to, as a club, I want to change the view of players and yep. all that stuff. You know what I mean? Like Talk. everyone sees players as this and this, but yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? What we do outside of it, and I'm not the only one. Yep, I've seen you do things for people outside the community, and yep. I've seen do everyone like across the whole um, club. I've seen people reach out, and um, I'm just a product of our club. Yep. You're not um, anyone else, just our club, the game, and my family. Talk to me about uh, Stepping Stone yep. House. So talk to me a bit about that charity that you've you know involved yourself this year. I feel like yeah. got some really good traction. A lot of the boys got yeah. on board, raised some it. really great money. Like tell me yeah. a bit about that. So Stepping Stone House is an organisation that's um, trying to home uh, homeless kids that have kind of um, just been in that vulnerable position of um, actually like child being listed as a child, um, you know, little. Little things like that, oh, not little, but you know things that really impact kids' life lives, and it's kind of forced them to run away from home, living on the street, yeah, living on the street, like yep. sexual abuse, um, you know, just abuse in general, um, being neglected, yep. um, and those things there that have um, impacted these kids, these vulnerable kids to um, yeah, run away from home and all all those things as well. So, what Stepping Stone House does is we create an organisation where. Um, in a homely base kind of thing where can, they can come in and feel like they're really at home and um, it gives them that another chance at life kind of thing and um, I think I've seen I've seen and been a part of the work that they do and it's yep. taking kids out on paddle boards and uh, taking kids out teaching them how to surf 
uh, taking in mountain climbing, all those things that you know kids wish they could do. And yep. Um, yep. I think the thing they do with that is kind of building their self esteem and stuff like that. So I love that. And y- you raised a fair bit of money for them this year, didn't you? We did. did. So we started the, the total? Um, start five, give five. Yep. Uh, so yep. it's tag five, give five. Sorry. And um, what that was was a big high five. Take your friends, donate five bucks. Yep. And yep, um, yep. they end up going crazy. Like. We've exceeded our 20 k limit. Um, Mate, that's unreal. So yeah, so we our initial goal was ten k, and then I could just went out the park. All the NRL boys were getting up on it. Um, yeah, you know, from across from the whole NRL, we're doing it. Uh, public, we're doing it. Yep. And then um, just people were like big, big bosses in there were just calling me saying, "I'm gonna donate this. I'm yeah. gonna donate this. Yeah. Like all this and that." And I was yeah. like, "Holy!" It. I just um. Did a thing with a guy yesterday, a promo, little promo thing for him and took a photo of outside outside of Cronulla, Gibson yeah. um, real estate. And he donated a hundred bucks for every try we had from the campaign onwards. So wow. that was awesome. And for him to donate all of that, and I think five bucks, I was happy to have five bucks and yeah. you know, any amount, whether it was two dollars, three dollars, that went along to yep. saving a kid's life and that's what's good about it. Mate, that's incredible. Mate, so proud of you. That's yeah. um, awesome, especially in what has been obviously a challenging year as well yeah, with yep. the bubble. Like you actually physically haven't been able to go and, and see mm. kids or actually do hands-on work. But to be able to do it still from a distance, I feel yeah. like, mate, it's you know only when the bubble's done and when we're back and – you know, we can people crowds can come to train yep. and you can go and see kids, man. That's yeah. gonna be you know, that's gonna take your work yeah. even further. And if exactly. there's anything I can do in the future, don't hesitate to reach Big out. Chatty's always supporting all right. the boys. <laughs> <up the board. laughs> um, all right, next uh, next topic, mate, was one we want to talk about was uh, Finne. Mm-hmm. Mate, uh, one, one, your best mate, yeah. one, of the, one, of the, one of the boys who sadly earlier in the year was diagnosed with brain cancer and, and went through a bit of a, a traumatic experience. And um, I know this might be a little bit hard for you to talk about, mate, yeah. but um, firstly, before you do go into it, I just want to say like how proud I was of yeah. yourself and obviously a lot of the younger boys who yeah. you know were really close with Finne, played SG ball, you know, 20s, all, all with Finne, same age. Um, but, mate, talk to me s- about the season that Finne's had. Obviously, diagnosed with brain cancer early in the year and we found out, I think, when we were you know, down at um, Kiama, Kiama yeah. on, on training camp. But... You know, what were your feelings or, or emotions, you know, when you first found out? It was tough. Um, I think we got a call before the boys did. Um, we kind of always knew it was, it was a, kind of in a bad situation. Yeah. Uh, we just didn't know how bad it was. Um, but when we got the call on that uh, Kaima session, it was, I think, the day before the boys found out. And it was the day before our last session. And yep. um, the missus and the family kind of called and just said, listen, no, um, this is this, blah, blah, blah. And... And we kind of just, me and Jensen were in the car together, mm. one of my best mates, just in the car together. And like, he, he never cries. And you know, Jensen, he didn't show much emotion. Yeah, just yeah. Around, dude. And he started tearing up real bad in the car yep. next to me. And I was yep. I was all over the joint. But I just said, I'm not going to tell the boys until we finish our session yep. the next day. Yep, yep. Um, and we get that over with. And then it kind of came out. And I think, like, all the boys were kind of rattled. Yeah. Like, well, what the hell just went on. Definitely. Um, I, I remember the session. I remember... Was quite hot. We're training in Wollongong, and I remember yeah. we just finished a really tough session, yeah. and we're all sort of buggered, and we're standing around in a circle. And I think it was Bomber who who told us yeah. all, and mate, it was it was so hard. I looked across, and and a lot of our players were in tears. Like it was yeah. it was extremely difficult. It was, um, I think, yeah. But you guys, mate, you, you guys, and. The way that I guess the boys, the club, everyone mm. got around Finney's family throughout the whole season was absolutely incredible, wasn't it? Well, that's what I mean. Like the love I have for this club, um, and that's where I come back where I need to owe them. I feel like I owe them something. Um, and the club, the boys, the coaching staff, um, just everyone, like from the media team who blew up posters and everything for us to yep. remember him through our journey this year and, mm. and through the club that supported them saying they'll pay the medical bills and all this and that yeah we had the fight for finne initiative sorry yeah and that was the boys pushing that as well um Mm -hmm. they didn't have to do that no one had to do anything yeah Um, but talk talk to me about how you 
remained focused all year at training because I remember there was a session there. We were over in Perth. We were just about yeah. to go on the training paddock and, yeah. and obviously the news was coming, you know, thick and fast with Finney about his yeah. condition. You know, one one minute he was feeling okay, next minute, you know, news yeah. is a little bit darker and he's not feeling not feeling the greatest. But I remember that one session and uh, we were literally just about to start. We had boots on, ready the coach was ready to blow the whistle to yeah. start and I looked over and you were, you know, had, had tears in your eyes, yeah. obviously just got some bad news about yeah. Finney. And, um, yeah, I remember coach went over to you and said, mate, you know, you, you don't need to train, you don't yeah. need to just take a rest. But how did you, you know, bring yourself together to be like, no, nah, I need to train, I need to separate myself, I need to play this year, yeah. I need to well, focus on my footy. Well, it's funny, that, that session as well, I got a call literally, like we said, before the whistle was about to go and it was the brother saying, so we were training on that, that Friday, was it? Yep, yep. Friday. So he went in that Friday and he had Monday to kind of breathe on himself, like yeah. breathe by himself or else they were going to turn it off and everything. And he kind of said, this might be the last couple of days yeah. kind of thing. And I just, I couldn't like get myself together a little bit. And I was just like, oh. And so Bomber kind of said, do you want to go back home? We can send you on the next flight tonight uh, yep. back home. And I, I kind of thought about it. And like, if you know Fina, he's just the guy that, no, don't worry about me. <laughs> yeah. Like, he he was half dead and still telling us, don't worry about me. Like, oh, go to man. training, and I was just like, you're half dead, and that's all you care about. Like, yeah. And so, like when I spoke to the brothers and that, they just said, listen, what would he want? Like, mm. that's that's what he wants. Like, yep. he wants me to stick around and yep. support him by representing him. Um, yep. And I'm and I'm grateful I did. Um, and you wore the ten. And yeah, and I was, I was yeah. big 10, so I had his jersey number 10 and the club presented to me. I felt yeah. like I, I, the shoulders got a bit bigger. Yeah. Than me. I was like, oh, I might have to start rolling the sleeves up for once in my lifetime. And um, it was good to kind of go out there and have that big um, slow go. Fight for Finney on the back as well, yeah. Yep. And then the boys are just unreal weekend with the boys. Um, yeah, and then again, like for the nines, we or get a thousand dollar match fee yeah. and um you know if you win you the prize money gets a bit more but every player gets a thousand dollars match fee to play and ronnie donated you donated yeah. yours to finney and his family mate that was incredible yeah so like that was that was the hard thing too was taking it to him um and just seeing him just mm. like that was probably the hardest time i had to see him was that time as well he just didn't move nothing yeah um but i like like I think I feel like the boys all played a part in it. Whether we did fundraisers for him, yeah, um, which was awesome. Um, I th feel like the family we really took the pressure off. You know, made our little difference we could. Yeah, um, and I I'm not saying it's just me because those boys there as well by his bedside. They were there almost every day. And yep. um, you know, like Jensen as well. He played a massive part in in this. And this is where I come back to the power of. Playing the NRL, yep, you get yep. to push the message, and I feel like we did did exactly that. Yeah, um, and got him the help that he needed and the funds that their family much needed uh, during that time. And and now that he's kind of come out of it, um, with a, a, vic a little victory, yeah. and um, we're just rallying around him and enjoying it. I can't wait to have a beer with him when he's. <laughs> I'm trying to get him to have a beer, and he's like, nah, not yet. I can't. I was like, nah, come have a beer. And he's like, but. Yeah, I can't wait for that moment. We can just share a beer because um, we used to have those days. We used to only yep. live up the road from here. So yep. we, used to, we used to just play the guitar and he was a real good singer and he could play the guitar as well. So he used to always show off. He used to piss me off. But yeah, um, we used to just sit there and have beers and those little, like when we take things for granted, that's what I took for granted, I think. And yep. all our mates as well, and kind of to have that come back to us now where we can soon have it. Yeah. Um, I can't wait. I'm going to cherish it a lot more next time we have it. So, you know, uh, s since then, we've obviously had some r incredible news about Fine. He's, yeah. um, he's cancer-free. Cancer-free. So and it, from going at one point where he potentially could be taking his last breaths, he's fought an incredible fight, showed yeah. you know, so much courage and strength, um, had some really good support around with his family, you know, guys like yourself, the yeah. club, all the all our boys. All so our everyone's boys. done their part, you know, yeah. raised some awareness. The NRL's helped out um, and whatnot. But, you know, talk to me about the emotions when you found out the news that he was cancer-free. Well, I was on a mass, like the massage chair. After <laughs> I could have barely walked from a game before and I was just sitting there getting the massage of my life, enjoying it. And then the brother calls me and I was like, I was thinking, oh, here we go again. You know what I mean? Like, I was just like, here we go. So I answered it. I was like, please be some good news. 
And he's just like, bro, I can finish a call right now. And I was like, what are you on about? Like, I'm panicking. Like, what are you on about? Blah, yeah. blah, blah. And he's just like, I was like, no, can you just tell me now? Like, like, and he's like, oh, no. he's being cleared. Um, there's nothing there. Like, they've checked everything, all the scans, uh, blood tests. And he's just, there's just miracle. there. Miracle. So that's what he was basically, he's like, it's a bloody miracle. What's going on? I just started cheer, like tearing up a bit on my chair. Yeah, and I think yeah. Britain or someone was there and I was trying not to show him. <laughs> so I was like, trying to put my head into the like, into the little dent in the, the middle, hole on the, the hole table, in the yeah. table. And I was just like, nah, I don't want to show the boys I'm crying at the moment. But <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Gave him a buzz right after. And he's just, I think he's still in shock now. Um, the team's in shock. And if you saw that raw image of him, yep. and what it, what deaf clothes, like, what do you mean? Like when it looked like death, yep. that's what it looked like. And yeah, yeah, yeah. When it came out that he was sweet, me, Drew, Jensen, I think all the boys were just like, I need to give me some of your blood, do your bloody walking miracle. <laughs> like, I love that, eh? Like I might start hanging out with him even more now, <laughs> start sleeping at his house. Miracles happen around him. So, but yeah, other than that, victory for all the boys. Yep. Um, and yeah, I can't be happier for him. Mate, that's incredible. Such good news. Um, We'll move on, mate, because um, we've got some questions from some fans who've written in from the mm. uh, Instagram story. But um, the first question is from at peachy underscore pie. Where does Ronnie find his motivation from? Absolute respect for your community work. Uh, my mum. Yep. Like I said, I love my mum, my best mate. Um, she's done everything for me from, you know, when we lived in a garage kind of thing and all those little things, you know, She's always a big believer in things happen for a reason. Um, and my brothers and I will probably get a tattoo on me one day. But, um, yeah, just – and giving back, you know what I mean? Like I, like I said, I always wanted a hero. Yeah, yep. grateful as. Yep. Yep. I always wanted a hero to come save me. No one came. Yep. I want to be that hero for someone else and help them out. Um, and, yeah, just that – in that sense, just helping someone out. Um, Love that. Just being in my culture. I'm a big believer of helping everyone around – you know, you don't, like, I still find it hard that I get paid this much. Um, I, I, I earn nothing compared to what everyone else does, but that's still plenty on to me, you know what I mean? I feel the person that's um, saving people's lives deserve this. Like, yep. I'm still grateful kind of thing, you yep, know what I mean? definitely. And I'm not complaining. But, yeah, I'm happy to do it because of my mum, my sister. I've got a baby sister at home that yep. looks up to me, and um, I know the role that I play within the NRL, and... Um, I want to be a leader in the NRL, not just a, a player. Yeah, I love that, mate. I love that. Well said. Next question is from the Corner Post. How did you end up at the Sharks? <laughs> I, 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 I want to know this too, actually. Yeah, yeah. I came here. So you recruited? Yeah, recruited. From, I was at school up in Ipswich, little Ipswich town there. And, yeah. Um, so you moved to Australia from New Zealand without nothing, nothing, no nothing, NRL contract. Just took, a, yep. took a gamble. Yeah, all right. And, um, Awesome. I remember I came here for, it was just like a camp, like a little camp. And we we're wrestling this massive Samoa team. Like, it was like us. And I was f 15, I think. Yep. And it was me, Jackson Ferris, and it, that team as well. I was a, we were part of the first group there. And um, when we were kind of played that game, I managed to go all right. Um, and me and Jax both went all right. And then they just said, they just kept saying, I'll keep coming to our camps like every year. And I just kept coming and then ended up signing a little contract, which brought me over in 2000, I think 17. Yep. 16, end of 2016. <laughs> so you guys had just won that contract. Oh, so the, comp, said, the comp. The comp. Yeah. So I came over, bro, and the club's at an all-time <laughs> high. And ever since I've been at the club, it's like, <laughs> yeah. but it's been, it's been funny as. Yeah. So I remember watching you and I was just, bro, I was riding you guys so hard, like, and all my family, like some of my family are Storm supporters. Yeah. Bro, and I was just I was just sharing the photo on their, their like timelines and everything. And then bro, I came here, started my journey as eighteen I was sixteen year old, I came here. Yep. Raw sixteen year old, angry sixteen year old. Um, and then yeah, managed to make my way through through the grades and um here I am living the dream of the guys that I used to ride, like, come on, boys, come <laughs> on, just get us home to that grand final. Yeah, good that. It's weird now that I still pinch myself yep. sitting next to all you boys and jumping on podcasts and stuff like that with the boys <laughs> and living the dream, you know what I mean? Mate, that's incredible. It's funny, yeah, it's, that, it's good. All right, next question is from Clarkie's Column. 
You came back from two shoulder injuries before you making yep. your NRL debut. What advice would you give to a young fan or a young player who you know might be battling injuries, wanting to you know progress through the grades? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard because it's um, when you're young, you just want to go straight to it. You know, you want to go straight to the top. You want to skip all the. You want it now. You want it now. Yeah, and um, obviously that it doesn't work like that. And the one thing I've always heard from ISIS um, podcast is that the world's always going to balance you. And I always thought, I'm invincible, I'm this and this. And then I had holes in my game, you know what I mean? And that was the way to balance me, was my shoulder. Yep. I got my stuff right, a little bit of discipline into me. <coughs> and I thought I was going all right again, and then another shoulder. And so this is where I come back to, my mum came back to things of, oh, uh, everything happens for a reason. So my one advice would be to you know, be resilient. And that's one thing you know, that will prepare great you. great piece of advice. They'll prepare you for NRL. If you're resilient, yep. you can... You need over, that in spades. You need that in spades. In spades. In, in, in NRL is <sighs> the heart. And I'm still trying to figure that out. Yep. But that's what got me through that little period. And I think putting things into perspective of, like, I know life's hard, but is it really that hard kind of yeah. thing? Like, you know yep. what I mean? That's not pressure. The pressure is the kid that's not eating. Yep. Um, I, and I always see it like that as, come on, put things into perspective. Yep. You know, I get it's hard doing rehab. I get it's this, but would you rather do rehab and stuff like that, or mm. would you rather go, you know, I mean, live on a street, which is that's that's tough, you know what I mean? So that's what I always did, um, putting things in perspective. I was grateful to still have my two arms, two legs, um, and a smile on my face, and that's all I needed um, to to become a you know football player and get through it. And I still live by that now. If I get injured, I get frustrated. Everyone yep. has their bad days, but yep, yep. a bad day is really bad days, kind of thing, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's how I lived by, lived by my kind of career so far. Epic. Next question is from NT underscore seven six seven skis seven six. Sorry, <laughs> what is your favorite try of your career so far? Um, I I didn't score, but it was the Broncos one. Um, when I kicked it, kicked it. it. <laughs> so I, I was just like, oh. Oh. so that's your favorite try so that's assist. My, that's my favorite, favorite try assist. assist. Uh, probably that, that was a great try. Yeah, I don't, oh, I don't even know because I'm cherry picking half the time. Probably the Bronx one as well, to be honest, when I did a little step. Yep. I actually got, yep. almost got caught by a prop. It was really <laughs> funny. Like, I love it. All the boys are like, you got caught by a prop. Why are you loving it? I was like, yeah, yeah. I don't care. I'm taking it with me like, to my grave. Yeah. Like, he's not a prop. He's a second row or something. Like, but, um, but yeah, probably that. Um, I always say I'm not going to carry on after a try, but I just like, fills me with like, you know what I mean? Just, I just get this massive adrenaline I love it, rush. mate. Yeah. I, I wish more of our boys would do it. Yeah. Because... A, it shows you're passionate yeah. about the, the game, the team, yeah. the jersey. B, it shows the fans that, geez, hey, I, I'm in this. Yeah. And they, they're they cheering and going all yeah. like I I would love to do it. Like, I'd yeah. done a few try celebrations a few you years ago when man. I was you know, dabbing in 2016 yeah. when it was in. And I was all for, I was all for it, man, yeah. because, like, people give you stick about it, but people love it as yeah, well. And it yeah. just shows a bit of – it shows personality, it shows yeah. character, and, and it's exactly. like, well, this is me. Like, if yeah. you like if you like me or you don't like me, well, this is me. That's how I am. Like, I'm just like – so I got to the point where I was like, oh, do I really give a shit? Like, yeah. I'm like, if I – try and be the way everyone wants me to be. Yeah. It just doesn't work. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so I was just like, yeah. I've done anything my own way. Um, I love that. I, w- I, I want, stop, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I want people to be themselves. Yeah. And if that means celebrating tries, then yeah. you, you celebrate every damn try you yeah, score in your whole exactly, career. Yeah. If it means, if like, Someone that comes to mind like Fecky. Every time Fecky scored Bro, a try, his face, his face would be like dry the same. Eyes. Just wouldn't wouldn't smile, wouldn't celebrate. But that that was Fecky. <laughs> yeah, that's me. We all and that was Fecky being yeah. Fecky. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's completely different to someone yeah. like yourself who like, you know, it, it makes you play better yeah. if you get pumped. I'm like, man, yes. Yeah. Do that. That's what I love. The boys have got right behind me. It's like, yeah. like everyone gives me stick about it, but in the game, like the adrenaline going through all the boys and that. Yeah. It's just everyone just loves it. Yeah. And then when, when there's a packed crowd, it's even more, more isn't it? That's yeah. when it's like stuff's really going on. That's when I love it. It's just like I get to show my emotion. I get to show yep. my, my yep. passion. And that's how much I, that's how much it means to me. Whether I cherry pick a try or yep. Yep. or worked hard for a try. Yeah. I try to try and I'm Hand celebrating the hell out of it. Like that's how I feel. It's like this is my team, you know what I mean? Like I'm just like, this is my team, take it off my back. Like, yep. you know what I mean? Yep. That's how it's like. That's what I mean. Like, I just want to be a dog, like, just a real, yeah. you know what I mean? Just, yeah. I love it. I just froth the boys and I just love having my teammates around me and celebrating our, our little victories. I love it. 
I love that, bros. All right, we'll we'll wrap it up there, big dog. Yes, sir. Mate, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Make sure you enjoy your off-season. Enjoy no bubble. Uh, yeah. So oh, t- coffee's in the morning. Take now. it easy. Sleep in. Sleep you know? in. Oh, <laughs> you're making me happy already, Chetty. <laughs> All right, Ronnie, we'll catch you soon. Later. Thank you so Thanks much, bros. Thank you so much, guys, for listening today. Another episode of the Chad Townsend Show with Ronaldo Mulatalo. Make sure you check out his Instagram, Ronaldo underscore Mulatalo. He's doing some great, great stuff. I'll see you next time. Yeah.